Hi, welcome to Mountain Madness, and uh, we're here for, I'm Steve, and we're here for the weekly Aconcagua chat. Uh, today we're going to add to the information we've given you about gear, uh, etc., and talk about just kind of a general overview of the trip itself. And there's some tips and, and tricks uh, uh, that we'll throw out there as well. So, uh, Aconcagua is a very big mountain, but technically it's quite easy. Uh, in fact, you don't rope up for it. You will be using crampons, uh, maybe an ice axe or ski poles. This photo shows uh, right near the summit um, and uh, gives you an idea of what the conditions will be like. Aconcagua is a very windy and cold place. So you, you often see people slugging it up to the summit with the giant down parka and big mittens, things like that. It looks almost Himalayan. And in fact, outside of Asia, uh, Aconcagua is the highest point um, on earth outside of Asia. So uh, nearly 23,000 feet. So you'd expect it to be cold and windy and uh, the air's a little thin up there as well. We start our trip in Mendoza, Argentina. And Mendoza is a, a farming center uh, mostly known for their Malbec wines and their beef. Uh, so it's sort of normal for those folks who eat meat to kind of um, uh, really pig out before the expedition and after the expedition on wonderful steaks and great Malbec wine. Uh, and we encourage that. Uh, from Mendoza, we get our permit, do all the final gear checks and things, and, and head up to the trailhead at Los Penitentes. And at Penitentes, we stay overnight, load the rest of the group gear up into bags, get it ready for the mules the next day. And uh, bright and early the next morning, we head out to the trailhead here, uh, it's very close, and load up the mules, start up the hill. The approach to base camp is uh, really two days of walking. We take three days. The first base camp is called uh, Confluencia, and that's uh, a fairly easy one-day walk from the trailhead. We camp there, and then we take a rest day. And the rest day is actually spent walking to the base of the south face of Aconcagua and getting acclimatization and getting some exercise. <coughs> From Confluenza, we walk one more day up the hill to Plaza de Mules, which is the big base camp. And it is commonly thought of as the second biggest base camp in the world uh, after Everest Base Camp. And there's plenty of uh, diversions at base camp. I mean, you can uh, get uh, uh, certainly internet access, you can buy a pizza. You can uh, get a haircut and a shave. There's an artist in residence you can buy paintings from. Um, it's, it's quite a, a, a place way out in the middle of nowhere. We'll spend a couple of days acclimatizing there and getting prepared to start shuttling loads up higher. And as we uh, approach base camp, you can see that the terrain is these valley bottoms. And they're, it's very flat, kind of... Uh, uh, this, the trail is not real rugged because there are going lots of mules going and horses going up and down the trail, so it has to be uh, uh, comfortable for them. So it's a really easy, technically uh, easy trail. Um, it's just a lot of miles. Eventually, we do get to base camp, uh, and you can see that uh, the tents are pretty well spread out and over a large area here. There actually used to be a hotel. Uh, at base camp, uh, a large hotel uh, that, that was constructed years ago, uh, no longer being used. I mentioned before base camp has great uh, food opportunities available to you. So pizzas and, and various things. You can actually get really nice Malbec and steaks there too. Uh, so really pleasant place to acclimatize and hang out. Uh, from base camp, we start slugging it up the hill. So we do multiple carries to the three camps above base camp. And so typically, we would be, say, go from base camp to camp one. The process would be 
leave base camp with uh, half a load, so half your gear, we'd go to the camp one site and we'd drop it off, cash it there, go back to base camp to sleep one more night, the next morning get up, take the rest of the gear up to camp one. Uh, so climb high, sleep low as much as we can, uh, and then shuttle the gear in double loads. Aconcagua is, a, like we've talked about, a big, cold, snowy place. Uh, so you obviously need to be prepared for that. Uh, but it has a beauty uh, of its own. Any big mountain is pretty incredible. And Aconcagua stands out with its own personality. The camps are striking. Or you're in striking locations in the landscape. Uh, you know, the pre-established campsites in different places. Uh, water can be sort of an issue, if, especially if it's a really dry year. Uh, you have to carry snow back to your camp so you can melt it. So sometimes that's the worst job of all. The guides really um, don't like when you get to camp and you have to grab your packs, they have to grab their packs and go cut snow to bring back to camp to melt it. But uh, the campsites are a combination of location on the trail, a good place to camp as far as a nice flat spot, and also some protection from the wind, hopefully. At our camps, we typically would get to the camp, we do the double carry to the camp, the next day would be a rest day. We've gone to a new altitude, so take a rest day, uh, and then we would start our double carry to the next highest camp. We try to make the camps really comfortable, but it is a backcountry or a mountain style expedition, so it's not going to be like a trek to Everest Base Camp or Kilimanjaro. You're going to have to be part of the process of taking care of yourself, uh, maybe helping around camp. Uh, the, the guides will be doing the cooking, uh, but uh, uh, you can always pitch in and help. You have plenty of tent time to relax, uh, get to know the other folks on the trip, uh, and get some sleep or rest. Again, pretty picturesque place. A lot of the, uh, the climbing are these long traverses like this. This is up high on the mountain. Uh, so you can see how when it's windy there, you're totally exposed to the wind. Getting up higher on the mountain, again, we're starting to get above all the outlying peaks here. And uh, uh, you're looking at you're the highest thing on the whole continent at this point and uh, being able to look at that kind of panoramic view uh, is pretty amazing. There's a lot of big mountains in the range and uh, at, at this point you're well above all of them. You get a chance to take a look throughout or at the whole area. So the, uh, the summit is you pop over the ridge um, and then the last little bit is up the, the summit here, up the summit ridge. Uh, kind of slug it up to the to the summit again. It's kind of you're going pretty slow at this point for the most part, and uh, it tends the summit day tends to be a really long day for most people. You're going from around 19,000 feet the high camp to uh, uh, just under 23,000 feet, and for most people it's not the ascent that's the problem. It's the descent because they've burned up a lot of their energy getting to the summit. And going down takes quite often as much time as it takes to go up to the summit. So it tends to be a long day, but totally worthwhile when you get to the top. Uh, an amazing place. Uh, again, uh, it's, uh, it's all about the effort you put into it, but uh, you get an awful lot out of it. Uh, this mountain is, again, you're not dealing with climbing problems. You're mostly dealing with physical challenge and the altitude and the weather. So you're not having to deal with technical issues, but environmental issues, and then your own trying to get enough air to the brain or enough oxygen to the brain to keep working. Low or slow, 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 and climb high, sleep low tends to work very well for most people. Uh, our schedule is set up to get the most acclimatization for most people in the time that most people would have to do the climb. It's, it's 21 days from home to return. Uh, so typically, uh, maybe you might add a day or two in Mendoza on the backside 
to eat more steak and drink more Malbec or tour some of the vineyards or maybe go to Buenos Aires and learn to tango or something on the way home. Finally, after we get off the peak, back to Mendoza, enjoy a little wonderful food, um, hang out in the, the cafes. Uh, <clears throat> for the most part, Aconcagua seems to be the second or third continental summit for most people. You do Kilimanjaro, maybe you'll do an Everest Base Camp trek, and then start thinking in terms of Aconcagua. We want to see not just some altitude trekking experience, we'd like to see some mountaineering experience. The mountaineering experience that you need is really basic, but uh, we need your experience with crampons on, walking on snow and ice. Um, technical climbing is not necessary, but you need to understand that this is an expedition where you have to take care of yourself a little bit more than common treks. So you have to be geared up a little bit more and a little bit more self-sufficient. We have trips scheduled this year with space available, December 15th start date, a start date of January 5th, and a start date of January 26th. Uh, and those are all on the normal route on Aconcagua. We also have two different styles that we work with uh, that you can sign up for. Uh, the, the normal common climb of Aconcagua, or we have what we call the Aconcagua Deluxe. And that is, we take care of all the paperwork so, and the payments. So typically, you have to buy a climbing permit uh, on Aconcagua. And that's around $1,000 per person. Depends on uh, the date that uh, the climb starts. Uh, and then you stay, our, our trip includes hotel in Mendoza on your arrival, uh, as well as the hotel at Los Penitentes and all the transportation. In the deluxe trip, we take care of paying for the permit as part of uh, what you're paying for in the deluxe. Um, you're also staying in a really first class hotel, five star hotel in Mendoza for um, a night before the trip, before the trip starts, and then two nights following. You're also having a porter paid for by us, um, and that's an option for anybody to hire a porter from base camp, and that's around $1,300. Uh, and we also, on the deluxe, will fly you out of base camp to the trailhead uh, at the end of the trip by a helicopter. So you kind of miss 17 miles of walking on the way out. And that gets you in Mendoza a day earlier than the rest of the group, and you're back in a really nice hotel, hanging out, um, uh, being pampered, as, if you will. So the, the Deluxe is becoming a much more common uh, uh, registration. Uh, about 30% of our registrants actually take the Deluxe because it's just super easy to to deal with. We do all the paperwork. We do all the, the uh, payments of uh, the porters, the permit, and of course there's the helicopter in the really nice hotel. We would love to have you join us on any of the Aconcagua trips. Please give me a call here at the office anytime. Uh, I'd love to talk to you more about it. Um, also, we have uh, some new trips coming up this year. I might as well give that announcement. Uh, we put a newsletter out, but we're having a K2 trek, and that's going to be in late June and in late July. That will go to Concordia, up the Baltoro Glacier to K2, and then over a pass on the other side of K2, and uh, dropping down a, a different valley. We're also going to be doing the Bhutan Snowman Trek, and that will be next fall. Uh, and that's often considered the most difficult or, or challenging trek in the world. Uh, those are coming up. We're getting a lot of interest for that. And uh, we're also excited about our new website that's coming out sometime around Thanksgiving. I want to thank you all for listening to us. And we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.